Good evening. Welcome to St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church in the borough of Brooklyn and here in Cypress Hills. We are happy to have each and every one of you here tonight as we begin this three-day period that lasts from this evening until Easter morning. Uh, and for centuries upon centuries, Christians have gathered, starting tonight, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, to celebrate the, the, his, his sacrifice on the cross, and secondly, to celebrate his resurrection and the victory. So tonight is the first night, and what we do on this night at St. Peter's is to honor Jesus, who was, above all, the great physician, was he not? He was a healer. He was one who healed. He was one who loved. He was one who spoke the truth, who put his hands on people and made them whole. And so tonight we will have, during our service, a time when you come forward to receive Holy Communion, but also to receive a healing blessing with the healing oil that is on the altar. That oil has been uh, consecrated, and uh, it, it is for all of us. Uh, we place it on your head in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you need special prayers, we can give them as well. But, to, but let us simply say it this way. The one who heals is not me. It is God. The one who heals is Jesus. So uh, if you will look at the uh, order of service on the first page, I'll start at the bottom. Like compassion for the sick was an integral part of Jesus' ministry. In the early church, ministry to the sick was considered an extension of the, of the regular worship service. According to the letter of James, those who were sick who were encouraged to ask the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them in the name of Jesus. Jesus' ministry to the sick was also about more than physical healing. Explicit or implicit in every act of healing was forgiveness, restoration, spiritual healing, and emotional healing as well. With God and of relationships within families, communities, and the created order. Like water, bread, and wine, oil was a staple of everyday life in Mediterranean culture. Do you all use oil in your cooking? All the time, see? Uh, it, its cleansing, medicinal, and healing properties were well known. Oil is a symbol of the Spirit of God. Prophets and priests were anointed with oil as a sign of God's call, protection, and blessing. Early Christians brought oil to the church for blessing and anointed one another as a sign of that blessing and healing. On the night Jesus was betrayed, we remember his holy meal, his passion, his love, and his healing touch. As Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, may we tonight who are healed and forgiven find the touch of mercy for everyone else as well as ourselves in our daily life. We are going to begin with our hymn, which is called Go to Dark Gethsemane. All please rise. Oh, 
sacrifice complete. It is finished, hear him cry. Learn of Jesus Christ to die. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's love and the peace of Jesus Christ, which passes all understanding, be with you all. We gather here with our sisters and brothers and God that we might receive healing. May all who seek God's healing open their hearts to the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Está enfermo alguno de ustedes, haga llamar a los ancianos de la iglesia para que oren por él y lo unjan con aceite en el nombre del Señor. La oración de, de fe sanará el enfer, al enfermo y el Señor lo levantará. Y si ha pecado, su pecado se le perdonará. Por eso, conf, confiésense unos a otros sus pecados y oren unos por, por otros para que sean sanados. Santiago capítulo 5. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. You may now be seated. So, first reading from Exodus chapter 12, 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too, too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of people there are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with, the, with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th, 14th, 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at the twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they, are, they eat the lambs. The same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, among with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted it over the fire head. Legs and inner parts do not have do not leave any, any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak stuck, uh, tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No 
destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Roy. Wonderful. We're going to ask our choir to come up here. And uh, Jackie, you may join if you'd like. Power of the Cross. Old favorite. Judy. I need to see you for a second. Okay. This is called the Power of the Cross. And we're all, this is for everybody to sing. Okay, here we go. Oh, to see the dawn. Anybody else want to be in the choir? Come on up, this is your chance. Make room. Here we go. Sin for us. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Wonderfully done. Good evening. This evening, second lesson, it's from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whatever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peters. La segunda lectura está tomada del libro de Primera de Corintios, capítulo 11, Thank you. versos 23 al 26. Yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que les transmití a ustedes, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que fue traicionado, tomó pan y después de dar gracias, lo partió y dijo, este pan es mi cuerpo que por ustedes entrego. Hagan esto en memoria de mí. De la misma manera, después de cenar, tomó la copa y dijo, esta copa es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre. Hagan esto cada vez que beban de ella en memoria de mí. Porque cada vez que comen este pan y beben de esta copa, proclaman la muerte del Señor hasta que Él venga. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Thank you, Eliana. We're going to remain seated tonight, and the reason for that is that two, we're going to read the lesson in both English and Spanish, right? The gospel. But I'm, we're going to stand and do this, uh, this proclamation, memorial acclamation. Okay, everybody stand for the memorial acclamation. This is real easy. Then you can have a seat again. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Here we go. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Let us walk with him. Christ has died. Christ has risen. The gospel lesson for this Holy Thursday is from the book of John, chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. Glory to our Lord. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had to come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped the towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, 
You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew he was going to be betrayed, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the gospel of the Lord. El Santo Evangelio en este Jueves Santo está escrito en el Evangelio de Juan, capítulo 13, versículos del 1 al 17. Se acercaba la fiesta de la Pascua. Jesús sabía que le había llegado la hora de abandonar este mundo para volver al Padre. Y habiendo amado los suyos que estaban en el mundo, los amó hasta el fin. Llegó la hora de la cena. El diablo ya había incitado a Judas Iscariote, hijo de Simón, para que traicionara a Jesús. Sabía Jesús que el Padre había puesto todas las cosas bajo su dominio y que había salido de Dios y a él volvía. Así que se levantó de la mesa, se quitó el manto y se ató una toalla en la cintura. Luego echó agua en, su, en un recipiente y comenzó a lavarle los pies a sus discípulos y a secárselos con la toalla que llevaba en la cintura. Cuando llegó a Simón Pedro, éste le dijo, ¿Y tú, Señor, me vas a lavar los pies a mí? Ahora no entiendes lo que estoy haciendo, le respondió Jesús, pero lo entenderás más tarde. No, protestó Pedro. Jamás me lavarás los pies. Si no te los lavo, no tendrás parte conmigo. Entonces, Señor, no solo los pies, sino también las manos y la cabeza. El que ya se ha bañado no necesita lavarse más que los pies, les contestó Jesús. Pues ya todos, ya todo su cuerpo está limpio. Y ustedes ya están limpios, aunque no todos. Jesús sabía quién lo iba a traicionar. Y por eso dijo que no todos estaban limpios. Cuando terminó de lavarle los pies, se puso el manto y volvió a su lugar. Entonces les dijo, ¿entienden lo que he hecho con ustedes? Ustedes me llaman Maestro y Señor, y dicen bien, porque lo soy. Pues si yo, el Señor y el Maestro, les he lavado los pies, también ustedes deben lavarse los pies los unos a los otros. Les he puesto el ejemplo para que hagan lo mismo que yo he hecho con ustedes. Ciertamente les aseguro que ningún siervo es más que su amo y ningún mensajero es más que el que lo envió. ¿Entienden esto? Dichosos serán si lo ponen en práctica. Este es el Evangelio del Señor. Te alabamos, Señor. Thank you, José and Henry. Now, since you got to sit down, during the reading of the lesson, now we're going to stand and sing. How about that? When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. If you had a tambourine, you could use it.
Please be seated. Greetings to you all in our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to extend special greetings to those who are here on this Holy Thursday to receive the healing oil and the healing meal. And I want especially to uh, point out the fact that we have Pastor James Roy and the people of God from United Bengali Lutheran Church in America. And we also have members of the Ozone Park community that, re that meets here on Sunday afternoon in Bengali at 2 o'clock. So thank you, Ronnie, Mila, thank you. Welcome to one and all. Welcome to the president and the treasurer, all of the uh, more officers in the back there. And uh, it's great to see you. So imagine yourself tonight to be a disciple of Jesus. Okay, it's Thursday. Where were you on Sunday? Where were you last Sunday? Marching through the streets of Jerusalem. Enter into Jerusalem. Let us go to God's house. You were rolling down the aisle. Jesus was king for a day. Jesus on the little donkey. Everybody throwing their palm branches. And now Jesus said, I, I, I need to have a meal with you and then explain some things to you. And after this evening, what happens? It all goes south immediately. All that beautiful celebration, all those beautiful moments, right? 
walking down the road with Jesus in the capital city, New York City, walking down Broadway, on the way to be the mayor, right? Then four days later, done, gone. Now, we watch TV. You all watch TV and all? But something happened this week, right, down in lower Manhattan. And the President of the United States was indicted. All right? What happens next? Who knows? <laughs> Nobody knows. But is anything happening tomorrow? Is anything happening this week? No. They might not have that case for another eight months, ten months, whatever. Long period of time. Jesus was arrested, indicted, went before two different courts, right? Two different courts, a religious court and the uh, Roman court, and was sentenced and was on the cross within 14 hours. All right? You say justice is swift. That's too swift. So what are you going to say tonight? Is this justice? I'm saying this is the opposite of justice. That other thing might be the opposite of justice too. Who can say? But, the, but I would just say this to you. You think about that as if you were one of Jesus' disciples. How quickly on a dime their whole world changed. See, they wanted a king who would heal them. Did Jesus heal them? All the time. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. He healed members of that whole same group. Did he love them? He loved them all the time. Did he raise some of his friends from the dead? Oh, yes, he did. He did all of those things. Did he teach them? What does the Bible say? He taught them every day for three years. Every single day they lived with one another. Did they have vacations? No. They just lived together for three years. Jesus wanted some privacy. They say he went off and prayed for a while, right? That's how intense that was. And they believed that everything they heard about Jesus was true. And then Jesus taught them some other things. And listen to them tonight. The first will be last. And the last will be first. If anyone wants to follow me, it is not that you, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve others. See? Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for a friend. This is what Jesus had been teaching them all along. And now it comes to this night. And, and how many times have I done this in my life? I would say thousands. I get up behind the altar and I start by saying, on the night when he was betrayed, how many times do I say that? Every single time. Every Sunday when you come into a church and take communion, Holy Communion, you're going to hear the same phrase. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. Right? And then he took the wine. And so he gave them that meal on that same night. So he's, he's healed them. He's been at Passover meals with them, I'm sure, in the other three years. And now he has one last Passover. What does the Passover mean? It means that the angel of death passes over the houses where the blood of the lamb is on the door. Where the blood of the lamb is on the door, back uh, 1,500 years before Jesus was around, those houses were spared. And those people then left. And, and uh, you know, when Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. And they left because they had been healed right there. And they had been freed. So on Sunday morning, who is then, who becomes the lamb? It's not a lamb on a doorpost, is it? It's a lamb upon a cross. Jesus takes up a cross so that the lamb of God might be our savior. So we're going to give these little tiny things to the kids on Sunday. If there are any extras, adults can have them, but there won't be any extra. Uh, <laughs> So they're funny. They ha it has a little cross on it. Now you can't even see it. I'd have to put it on magnifying. 
there's a little cross that says it's not about the bunny it's about the lamb it's not about the bunny it's about the lamb and then there's a little sheep a little lamb boop, 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 and the lamb has a cross upon its chest the lamb has the cross the lamb is the mark of the cross is the mark of your redemption the mark of the cross is the mark of your healing the mark of the cross is the mark that says I'm part of a, of, a, of a God who loves me and gave up his life for me. I have been claimed by this Jesus. I have been healed by this Jesus. I have been given salvation in the life to come and healing from my body, my mind, my spirit, right, and my soul all by the same God. Can God do that healing for you? See or no? See? Oh no. See, does God heal today? Yes. Does God bring that healing in the, in the contact we have with other people? Yes. Does he bring it through doctors and nurses and all those people? Of course. Yes. He, does he bring it through his word, which says, I have a promise for you and I'm not going to break it? See, that's where I start. The promises of God can, are not broken. Jesus was broken so that the promises of God might be true. So that no matter how far you wander off the path, and all we like sheep have what? Gone astray. But no matter how far we wander off the path, God pulls us back in and says, you are my child. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are the one whom I love. And so tonight, just think of these things that Jesus does. On the night he was betrayed, he teaches his, his people, us, about love. He says, love one another the way I've loved you. He then shares with them this beautiful thing that we had in the gospel where he washes their feet. He's always the servant. He's not the master, he's the servant. You need some of that in your life? Understand this. This means that God serves you. And when you kneel down, you don't want to say, well, God, please serve me now. You know, you want to say, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. Are we worthy? No. Does God still serve us with his love? Yes, because that's who God is. And when you are serving other people, you're doing the will of God. So he loves them. He tells them about love. He serves them. He then gives them this beautiful meal and says, even this is my body and my blood. I'm going to be broken for you, and I'm going to give you a path to life eternal. He does those three things right there, and then he walks right out that door and faces his betrayal, his judgment, his indictment, his sentence, and his death, all within this short period of time for you and for me. That's the magnificence of God brothers and sisters. That's what he does for me. That's what he does for you. May you receive tonight his healing in the anointing with oil. May you receive his body and blood for strength and for unity in this body. And may we go forth from this place and proclaim his wonderful name each and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, now have the offering, and the offering will just be collected and we'll go right into the confession. Can just play something. Some
Please bring the prayers forward as well. Oh, please rise. We are now going to continue with the confession of sin. Friends in Christ, upon the page seven or on the screen, friends in Christ, God knows our needs before we ask and in our asking prepares us to receive the gift of grace. Let us open our lives to God's healing presence, letting go of all that separates us from God, from our neighbor and from our own self. Let us confess to God whatever has wounded us or brought injury to other people. We speak together, loving God, we recognize and sorry for our wrongful thoughts, words, and deeds. We've offended you by what we have done and by what we have not done done. We've not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our prayers for healing. I'll just read these off and some online prayers and we'll add a few and then I will, I will do the petitions tonight. It's a little different. I'll read a petition, I'll say a phrase and at the end of it I'll say, Jesus Christ, lover of all, and you will say, bring healing, bring peace. For Joycelyn uh, in memory, for uh, Mohan and family, Anne and husband, Jeanette and Charles in Florida, Lenny in Florida, for Ozzy, for Don Raj, the Don Raj family, for Marie Cristello in the hospital, for Ryan Reynolds, for Dewan Majors, for Andrew Ryan, for Pastor B, that's me, for Luana Butts, who's been in the hospital, for Norman and Roshan, for uh, the Fanara and Beck families, which are mourning the loss of Richard Beck, Pastor Richard Beck. For Leland family, for Anne Marie, for N N N N N N Nadia? Nadia, Nadia and family, for the Isley and Ryan families, Velma and Eddie, Brenda, Gloria, Carolyn, uh, Valerie, and Lauren and their families, all for guidance. For Logan Ryan on their travel, and Lori on their travel to Washington, D.C. And online prayers for Sunita Chattergoon for healing for her and her family, for Cookie or Carolyn Gillette for healing, for Debbie Prop, uh, Trotter, pray for son Matthew for guidance, for Joanne Carrington and the Blades family, for Virginia Antonetti down in New Mexico for healing, and the, also the Padin family. And for Anne Ransomuj, who was just here and worshiped with us and is now back in South Carolina, not North Carolina. Other prayers from the people. Judy? For John and Debbie. And we keep them in constant and daily prayer. John Vergara out in Long Island for Debbie Vergara, faithfully with him and with a lot of love for both of them. Yes, Steve? Okay, 33 years of remission. That's a good thing. Give a hand. There you go. Okay. For Gita and David, always. For uh, all, the whole rest of the Chandra Dot, uh, we prayed in the other meeting for them too, David and Gita. Okay, others? Yes. Yes, and for Lisa and for Carmen, who are going to be going on a trip. That's on now, soon, right? They're going to the Caribbean islands, Judy. Yes, on a Scandinavian cruise line. It's going to be good for safety, for joy, for peace. And just for that sense that God is with you every step. Sonia. For Sonia for healing. 
Healing and also Eliana. También. Ok. June. Karen, Susan, Audrey, Diane, Miller, Diane Giordano, and Pam. And Audrey, okay. Yeah, Jackie. Continual healing for Clara. For Clara Del Valle, right back there. Continued healing. In every, every which way. Very good, thank you. Others? I think we're good, okay. Then let us pray. Remember the phrase is, Jesus Christ, lover of all, bring healing, bring peace. Father in heaven, we come before your throne of grace tonight, and we ask you to just continue to open up our eyes, our minds, our hearts to your precious will, to the love that you have had for us in Jesus. And on this night, the night he was betrayed, help us to understand our role in the salvation story, that we are the recipients of that love of God that would not die. And that love of God that went to the cross, died for us, and rose again. Bless us tonight, Father, as we consider our place in your salvation story and resolve once again to walk with you all the way. Jesus Christ, lover of all, we pray, Father, for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones and those who are sick and suffering. Whether those sufferings are physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional, we know that Jesus is the great physician. We know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So guide, comfort, sustain, and lead those who are sick and suffering in any way tonight. Allow this oil as we have blessed it to your holy purpose to be an agent of your healing in our midst in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, lover of all. We pray now, Heavenly Father, prayers of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for all the beautiful things in life, uh, for those who are traveling, for those who are celebrating birthdays, for all of us as we seek to come together around this throne in this holy week and, and, and once again renew our vows to you. Bless us, guide us, and keep us. Keep this world, which seems to turn in such different ways these days, to be turning in your direction, Heavenly Father, by the wisdom that you have from on high. Allow us the precious gift of that experience. Jesus Christ, lover of all. And now we lift up his name and we pray all that we have to pray tonight in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may establish in us that living faith and prepare us gladly to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after supper he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. And you may join hands now and we will sing together the Lord's Prayer, our prayer of unity. If you, if you can sing it in your own language, by the way, whatever is comfortable. As 
Peace of the Lord be with you all. Passe contigo. Shalom. Salam. Shalom. Salam. Okay. Whatever you need. Peace.
sometime. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus and the blessing of this healing oil be yours tonight and eternally. Depart in peace. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. O God, the Father and fountain and source of all goodness, who in love and kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but to always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the benediction of Almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. I would just direct your attention to the last page where you will have all the rest of the services of Holy Week. Uh, tomorrow at 3, Holy Communion here. Tomorrow at 7.30, the Stations of the Cross. A lot of people like to come out for that service. 7.30 p.m., we go around the, the building and follow the cross all the way around the building. And then Easter morning at 7 a.m., we start here. If you'd like to get up early. Anybody like to get up early? And then we go to Highland Park, right out there. I'm going to say something. I'm, I'm off topic, but... I was told today that it has not rained on Easter Sunday since 2005. Yes, that's true. And it's not going to rain this Sunday. So we're going to go to the park at 7. Then we have continental breakfast at 8.30. We have breakfast at 8.30. And then we have church at 9.45. Festival, a lot of singing. New member comes in. And then we have Easter brunch at 11, 15, a lot of people cooking. So those are just invitations to all of you and invite your friends. I know a lot of people are out of town. I know there are people here tonight who are leaving. And I thank you for coming out tonight because that's a good sign. Uh, but we're now going to continue. And the, the service concludes tonight in silence. So we're going to sing a song called a, lo a hymn. It was alone. And this is what happened that Jesus was alone on this night. He was betrayed. He was alone. His disciples, what does the Bible say? They forsook him and left. Think of yourself in that picture. Where are you? Then we will, we will sing that song, and then Sonia and the altar guild and other assistants are going to strip the altar, and we will leave in silence. Okay? We will speak a psalm together while they're stripping the altar. In fact, you could probably start toward the last verse of the hymn, maybe, all right, uh, so we don't run out of words. Let us then sing the, word, the song alone. If you don't know it, it'll come to you quickly. We may remain seated.
all alone. He gave himself to save his own. He suffered, bled, and died alone. It was alone the Savior stood in power. Was alone, yes, all alone, yes, all alone. He gave himself to save his own. He suffered, bled, and died alone, alone. alone. Forsaken by God and man, all his life he gave. It was alone, yes, all alone, he all alone, yes, all alone. Suffered, led, and died alone, alone. Can you reject such masterless love? Can you his claim disown? Come give your all in gratitude. Nor leave him thus alone. Alone he was alone. Yes, all alone. Yes, all alone. He saved himself to save his own. Slow it down. He suffered. And I alone, alone. We meditate upon the cross, and in several moments we will speak together the uh, Psalm eighty eight. The psalm, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I'm overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. I'm counted among those who go down to the pit. I'm like one without strength. I'm set apart with the dead like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves. You've taken from me my closest friends, made me repulsive to them. I'm confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, O Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show your wonders to the dead? Do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness in destruction? 
Are your wonders known in the place of darkness or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth I've suffered and been close to death. I have borne your terrors and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken from me friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. Just think that. 